All right, welcome back, everybody. So um, again, this is section eight, eight six. This is the last section out of chapter eight. We'll spend two days on this section, really kind of like just one day, and then just do more example problems tomorrow. And then uh, on Wednesday, you'll get your practice test, um, practice test for homework, go over it on Thursday, test on Friday of this week. Okay, test on Friday of this week. Notice again on the homework tonight, I'm telling you how many are not factorable. Uh, from questions 19 to 24, there are three not factorable. From questions 25 to 36, there are only two not factorable. Okay. All right, so um, remember that a polynomial is in its fully factored form when it is written as a product that cannot be factored further. Again, uh, this, is, this is a reminder that you guys are going to struggle with when do I know that I am done? When do I know that I am in fully factored form? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to present you with some possible final answers, and you're going to have to tell me, is it done? Is it done? Completed. Okay. So say somebody writes this on an answer blank. Is that in its fully factored form? Well, here's what you have to do. You have to go through and look at the products, look at the, the things that are multiplied together and run it through the flow chart. And if you can do something, you got to do it. For example here. Now, if it's just a monomial, it's fully factored down. You see that monomial 3x squared? Can I do anything with that 3x squared? No. I can't break that up. I mean, I guess I could possibly make it 3 times x times x if I really wanted to. But that's really tricky. You don't do that. So let's take a look at this 6x minus 4. Let's run it through the flow chart. Okay, first thing I want to check. Does it have a GCF? Yes. So is it in its fully factored form? No, I've got to factor that out, okay? So that means I've got to take this 3x squared. Let's bring this down a little bit. Let's factor out this 6x minus 4. Well, what's the GCF of 6x minus 4? 2. 2 times, and it would be 3x minus 2. Right? I got to leave. You got to leave? Yeah. All right, see you. You're just coming to get your bag. Um, the, the video will be up online. All right. Um, so we've got this two times three X minus two, right? That factors into that six X minus four factors into two times three X minus two. All right. Now this three X squared sitting out front. What do we do with it? We have to multiply it back together. All right. Well, I'm going to multiply this piece on the, on the outside. Three times two is a six X squared times 3x minus 2. And that's my answer. Because it's just multiplication on the outside. I guess I should have checked. I guess I shouldn't have stopped. I guess I should have boxed my answer until I was fully done with the flow chart. I pulled out a GCF. How many terms do you see inside the parentheses? Two. Is it a difference of squares, though? No. It's a difference, but are they all perfect squares? Is 3 a perfect square? No. The x has an odd power anyway, so it's not a perfect square in that respect. And honestly, 2 is not a perfect square either. So. Yeah. All right, let's keep it rolling. All right, I see two binomials. Two binomials. I've got to check both of them. Say somebody put this on the answer blank, and you're like, okay, is this truly completed? Well, let's take a look at this red one first. Is there a GCF to pull out of that red one? No. How many terms do you see? Two. Is it a difference of squares? No, it's a plus sign. So red, done. Not factored anymore. It's in its fully factored form. All right. Let's check the blue. Does it have any other GCF? Nope. How many terms do you see? Is it a diff? Oh, so it's a difference. I see a minus sign. But are they all perfect squares? No. So blue, done. We say not factor. Now.
If you can run each piece through the flow chart and you don't do anything to it, you're done with it, not factorable. Let's check this one. 4x plus 4x plus 1. Let's check. We underline this one in red. Let's check the red. First off, does it have a GCF? Yes. What is my GCF? 4. Let's pull out the 4. That leaves with it, us with an x plus 1. All right. I see an x plus 1 within the parentheses. Keep going down the flow chart. It's two terms, but is it a difference of squares? No, there's a plus sign in between. So done with that now. Now we just checked an x plus 1. Does it have a GCF? No. Is it a difference of squares? No. So let's just drop it down. There's nothing to do with that one. You know, the only other way I could have written this is 4 and then an x plus 1 squared if you really wanted to, but you don't really need to do that. too far. All right, this is a monomial on the outside. You don't need to check monomials. But this is a binomial on the inside. Let's check the red on the inside. Does it have a GCF? No. Is it a difference? Yes. But are they all perfect squares? No. They are not perfect squares. This is a power of one. So I'm done. We would say that this is not factorable. Or if you want to say prime, that's fine too. Again, how do we know when it's not factorable or prime? You can run it through the entire flow chart and you do nothing to it. No GCF, no nothing. Um, remember, the first rule of factoring, always see if you can factor out a GCF first, right? Uh, if none of the factoring methods work, the polynomial is said to be unfactorable. I don't know why I left you a bunch of room. I think I was I was thinking that we would write our flow chart down there, but I had to do that on Friday with a separate piece of paper. So we're good. Flip it over to the, the second page. All right. So here is when it gets fun. When I'm going to – yeah, my version is fun. My version is fun. Yeah. Uh, this is when anything is fair game. Okay. Anything is fair game. Look at the direction. Just says factor. Factor completely. Okay. Factor as much as you possibly can. How do you know when you're done? Well, you run it through the flow chart. And when you get to the bottom of the flow chart, that's when you know that you are done. So, what should I check first? GCF. Is there a GCF? I at least see that these are all divisible by at least two, right? Because they're all even. Let's check something higher. Well, the only thing that 10 can be divided by, well, is 10, and obviously these two aren't, can't be divisible by 10. Um, and then 5, and 48 can't be divided by 5, and 32 can't be divided by 5. So the only thing that I can possibly pull out, and, and you notice how they don't have an x in common either, the only thing that I can pull out here is a 2. So let's divide it out. Let's divide that GCF out. So that leaves us with a 5x squared plus 24x plus 16. Okay, so I pulled out my GCF. How many terms do you see? Three terms. So now I have to decide, is this an easy type or hard type? So now we got to check to see if it factors by rewrite. If it doesn't factor by rewrite, I can stop. But let's check to see. Well, I've got to find the factors of what? Which is what? 80. Find the factors of 80. Remember, first times last. That add together to get 24. Well, 20 times 4. Yeah. I'll write it as 4 times 20. I always like to put the smaller one first. Now, now that I know that this will factor, I'm going to just arrow this two down because I'll tell you what, one of the most common mistakes that I see is that you guys let your GCF kind of like vanish into thin air and just kind of like disintegrate. Don't let it vanish. 
I always like to write an arrow down to remind myself, don't forget about me. All right. So we have rewrite the first term and the last term, keep it exactly the first, the, the exact same. But then I rewrite my middle term into the two pieces. And now we factor by grouping. Yeah. Yep, I always make it smaller than bigger, but you can do whatever you want. Um, it'll come out to be the same thing. So we pull out an X. Notice that there's no GCF between 5 and 4. So just pull out an X, leaving a 5X plus 4. And then the 20 and the 16 has a GCF of 4. So we divide both parts by 4 to get a 5X plus 4. So that means my answer is a 5x plus 4 and an x plus 4. Now, you should check your answer to say, okay, look at my two final my two binomials there. Are there any GCFs in here between 5x plus 4 and x plus 4? No. I could then move down my flow chart, flow chart to see two terms. Are either of these differences? No. So I know I'm done. Right? I know that I haven't missed anything. So this is my final answer. Let's keep going. Follow the rules for the flow chart. Okay. What should I check first? GCF. All right, this looks weird. It's got a lot, of, a lot of things going on. Let's check the GCF of each thing. 8 and 18, what's my GCF? 2. All right, I've got an x to the 6th and an x to the 2nd. Remember, I always go with the smaller power. If they share an exponent, if they share a variable, go with the smaller exponent. So x to the 6th and x to the 2nd, the GCF would be x to the 2nd. I've got a y to the 2nd and a y to the 2nd. Oh, perfect. Let's pull them both out. They share that y to the 2nd. Now remember, if you have that as your GCF, that's what you're dividing out. That's what you're removing out of that those two chunks. So we would take 8 divided by 2 to get a 4 x to the 6 divided by x squared to get an x to the 4. The y squareds come all the way out. Nothing left over. Minus 18 divided by 2 is 9. And then all of my variables get removed. See, that's all the way back from section 8.2. Factoring out a GCF. That's a long time ago. Am I done? No. No. Because I haven't done the full flow chart. I've done a GCF. How many terms are on the inside of my parentheses? Okay, is it a difference of squares? Yeah. I see a subtraction sign. 4 is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. x to the 4th has an even power. This is a difference of squares. So we carry through our 2x squared, y squared. And then we put our two parentheses, one with a minus, one with a plus. And we square root everything. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x to the 4th is x squared. The square root of 9 is 3. And that's my answer. Okay. We got to the end of our flow chart. Done. All right, let's keep it moving. What's the first thing that I should check? GCF. All right, well, look at the three numbers, 12, 48, and 48. Well, 12 can be divided by 12, right? Can 48 be divided by 12? Yeah, that's 4. So I can pull out the full 12, and do they all have a variable in common? Yeah, they all have a b. Smallest power is b to the first, so let's pull out that b. So we divide everything by 12b.
All right. So what's left over in my first term? Just a b squared. And then 48 divided by 12 is a 4. There was a b squared divided by b to the first is just a b. And then 48 divided by 12 is, again, a 4. And then the b got removed. All right, look at my inside of my parentheses. How many terms do you see? Is that an easy type or hard type? Easy type. Okay, so all I do is look at my last number and I say factors of 4 that add to get to 4. What are they? 2 and 2. All right, so this is factorable. The nice thing is, is there's not a lot of work that goes into it. X, oops, sorry. I changed it into an X. Uh, B plus 2. B plus 2. And there's my answer. Because again, that was an easy type. Look, factors of 4 that add to get to 4, 2 and 2. Positive 2, positive 2. So I just write positive 2, positive 2. Keep my 12B on the outside. Leave it on the outside with my GCF. Let's keep it moving. Be careful. Are these like terms inside that parentheses? Can I just subtract them? No, they're not like terms. One's an X to the fourth and one's an X to the next squared. So no, you cannot do subtract. All right. First thing I should check. Does it have a GCF? Yeah. Yes. What is my GCF? X to the second. X squared. So let's remove it. So this is an x squared minus 1. Okay, be careful here. I see two terms. Is it a difference? It is a subtraction. Are they perfect squared? Is x squared a perfect square? Is 1 a perfect square? Yes, 1 is 1 times 1. So 1, yes, is indeed a perfect square. So this is a difference of squares. So that means I can put our two parentheses, one's with a minus, one's with a plus, square root x squared to get an x, and we square root 1, yes, 1 is a perfect square. If I go to my calculator here and I square root 1, it's just 1. And that's my answer. Okay, let's keep it moving. Just kind of throwing in all the things that we possibly can. We've got 9q to the 6th plus 30q to the 5th plus 24q to the 4th. All right, what's my GCF out of all three of these? Carson? Three? I agree with that. Three, then what? Three, they all have a Q, right? Good, 3Q to the 4th, good. Divide everything by 3Q to the 4th. How do I know that it's just a 3? Well, look at the smallest number, 9. The only thing that 9 is divisible, or, well, I know 9 is divisible by 9, but 30 can't divide by 9 and neither can 24, so I guess i got to go lower. The only thing that 9 is divisible by is 3. And those other two numbers are both divisible by three. So what happens? Oops, sorry. That's two to the fourth over here. So we divide that out. I'm going to get q squared, sorry, 3q squared, plus 10q plus 8. All right. I see three terms. Is this an easy type or hard type? Okay, so I got to multiply first times last. 3 times 8 is 24. Are there factors of 24 that I had to get to 10? What are they? 6 and 4. I'll write it as 4 times 6. 
Okay, now that I know that this is going to be factorable, I'm going to arrow this down. This 3q to the fourth, I'm just going to put that right in my answer. And now let's factor this inside piece here. So I rewrite 3q to the fourth, or sorry, 3q to the second, excuse me, plus 4q plus 6q plus 8. And then I factor by grouping. I pull out a q to leave us with a 3q plus 4. And then I pull out a 2, leaving us again with a 3q plus 4. So my answers are 3q plus 4 and q plus 2 to go along with my 3q to the 4th GCF. It's a lot. I get it. There's a lot of pieces to this. But if you follow the flow chart, you just have to kind of chip away at it. Take a look at our next one. 2x to the fourth plus 18. All right. So first things first, is there a GCF? Yeah. Yeah, what is it? There's two. Pull out the two, we're left with an x to the fourth plus nine. All right. I see two terms on the inside. Is this a difference of squares? No. I see all perfect squares. X to the fourth is a perfect square, nine is a perfect square, but is it a difference? No, it's not a subtraction. So the only thing I did, see, I wouldn't call that not factorable, because I did something to it. But the only thing I did was just pull out the two. Questions about that? Got a couple more too. Take a look at the next one. Yikes. Uh, what should I do right off the bat? I guess I, you know. To even begin to factor, what should we do? Well, make sure it's from the high exponent. Yeah, what's that called? Putting it into what? Standard form. Let's put it into standard form. I've got a negative 20x to the third minus 28x squared plus 5x plus 7. All right, do I have a GCF out of all four terms? No. I don't have a GCF out of all four terms. But what I can do, because it's four terms, I can try to group. Let's see if this groups. Let's see it. Well, the GCF out of my first two terms be careful. What do I pull out here? Negative 4 x squared. Remember, since it leads with a negative, I pull out the negative. Negative 4 x to the second. And then I have a um, an x, oh sorry, 5 x, excuse me, 5 x uh, plus 7. And look, 5x plus 7 sitting there. So pull out a 1. Which leaves me with a negative 4x squared plus 1 and then a 5x plus 7. And we can leave it like that. That's fine. Yep, that's totally fine. You just have it flipped around. And that's okay. You just see. You should. You should always put it into standard form first, though. Okay. Yeah. All right. Take a look here. The last one you guys got, right? Yeah. What's my GCF? Is there a GCF? 
No, okay. Is this an easy type or hard type? Mm -hmm. uh -oh. hard. hard type. There's two up front. So I would say two times negative one is negative two. What are the factors of negative two that aggregate to positive three? Uh -oh. Be careful. Two times one is two times one is positive two. Negative one times two or negative two times one are my only two options. Do either of those two factors get us to positive three? No. What do we say about this? Prime. This is prime or not factorable. Okay. All right, so again, follow the flow chart. Follow the flow chart. It's very, very important to follow the flow chart. Everybody late.